Welcome to this week's upload where we're going through three successful football betting strategies. So I'm creating this video because several of you have asked in the comments recently about football betting strategy and also I honestly believe that anyone can make an income online through football betting when they have the right strategy. In fact, several of football's most successful punters have been trading these prices for a number of years now. It's often done by reading previous data patterns on past events and applying all that you've learned to the present, which is exactly what this video is about because I'm going to share three different strategies that you can consistently apply to the football betting markets in order to extract a profit over the longer term. But before I do that, I just want to mention last week I gave away £310 cash to one lucky YouTube viewer. Uh, within this video we're going to do another cash giveaway so stay tuned to see if you've won the cash and also how you can go about collecting that from us. So on to the strategies. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of strategy there's a very crucial uh, point that I need to make and it is a large problem but is also part of the solution when you're building betting strategy or successfully betting on football and that is fanaticism. So football is a very passionate sport there's a lot of biases within the markets and that's because there's biases within people that follow football. Now you don't want to be one of those people, you can't be emotional, you can't be too passionate, too connected and attached to a team or a league or a player. Okay, You need to eradicate as much of that bias as you possibly can to effectively implement your strategy within the market. Now when I talk about trading within this clip too, some people may be confused. Betting and trading are extremely similar. Basically, when you're trading, you're opening a betting position and then you're cashing out that betting position to lock in the profit, and you're doing so with an edge or advantage within the market. It may very sound very simple on the top level, and in many ways it is, but it's a little bit more tricky to execute in the markets. If you've already tried, it's highly likely that you understand where I'm coming from with that one. So in this video, it's going to be more practical. I'm going to tell you some practical ways with some logical reasons backing them up, including some graphs and strategy and data and information, meaning it's possible for anyone to do. I'd also advise getting some trading software, right, for all of your trading, just because it gives you more information, quicker information, and it's more useful for making informed decisions, as you'll see later in this video. And on top of that, you want some live streaming of some sort for the match that's going on that you're betting and trading on at that point in time. Now, the more live that it is, the more helpful it's gonna to be to you. If you're using HD uh, services and all this 4K kind of stuff, then you can expect a significant delay. Betfair live video is typically quick enough. It's usually a few seconds behind. Um, you can take that one step further if you really want to go die hard. There's people out there that collect BIS keys, get satellites in their back garden just so they can hijack the TV stream and beat everybody to the market in terms of placing bets. But that's quite extreme. That's not for this video. This video is focused solely on strategy and implementing yourself in the market where you can find value um, and where that is. Now, the benefits of having a strategy are really quite obvious. Um, it's going to help you avoid impulsive behavior doing silly things, uh, clicks in the market. Um, obviously it's repeatable once you've got a successful strategy refined down and you believe in it and you're willing to put your money on the table. It's more durable long term and you can scale it up over time, even through harder times you know that you can weather the storm. So we're gonna get into these three strategies now because I've gone on enough already. Um, the third one, in my opinion, is the best one and we've got a quality live example to show you exactly how that works. Two. So starting off with strategy one, it's a very low risk strategy. Um, there's little, sometimes there's no risk involved in doing this. Although I'm not going to kid you, you know, you can't necessarily do it in every single football match. But I'm here to tell you the truth and actually help you rather than get you to mindlessly place bets. So the reason this strategy works is because it's focusing on an imbalance in probabilities, meaning you're more often uh, likely to get a bigger upside than you are downside, and therefore it will put you in the green long term. Uh, player psychology on pitch is very important, a uh, key element to this strategy, as is overreactive behaviour in terms of people betting on the football, not people playing the football, people betting on the football, and again, that same group of people um, panicking. Panic from losers, quite frankly, which is not going to be us. So just to elaborate on that slightly more, there is, as you'll, in fact, you'll see in a moment with the chart that I'm about to explain and, and highlight on screen, that there is an imbalance um, in terms of there's more upside than there is downside. Uh, the player psychology on pitch is extremely important because this 
setup happens after a goal has been scored and typically around that point in time player behavior changes or there's a lull for a brief uh, period sometimes there's a counter attack from the countering team which is going to go in our favor too um, and then the overreactive behavior is again those fanatics of people that we've previously mentioned uh, in the opening to this video uh, people feeling like they've missed out on potentially is going to move the market in our favor um, and again those losers and they're panicking are chasing their their losses maybe and they're cashing out profits really quickly after the goal and they are all going to work for us in our favor to give us an advantage in the market so the way to make the best of this strategy in terms of winning is to make sure you come in with an opportune entry position entry bet to so the opening bet in your, in your strategy uh, offering value at price for yourself not for everybody else so you're offering poor value for everyone else and it also exploits a natural stalling point within the market so it's low risk, we're looking after the losses and then waiting for the upturn. Whilst everyone else is in turmoil, quite frankly, we're going to take advantage of that. So if we look at this chart, you can see uh, it's the, the chart on Betfair's exchange for a football match. There has been two goals in this match very noticeably on screen there and that is where the price has dropped. Now, when the price drops, you can see that there is this routine pattern of behavior. There's an overreaction that goes all the way down and where I've highlighted on screen there with the green dotted line. So you wanna place your opening bet. So the opening parts of this strategy is to place a lay bet at the bottom price there um, or around about there. You don't have to get the exact price and you're offering a bet to the market. So the market overreacts. Um, sometimes it can go on for sort of like 20, 30 seconds while the market sorts itself out, bouncing around. Uh, typically it's not for too long, but like I say, we're here, to, we're here to make money, not, you know, sort of spin you some, some debt. The market then corrects itself and goes back to where the yellow line is, uh, dotted across the screen there, which will put you in profit to start. Looking at this example, that would give you around about six ticks profit that you could cash out for. But the most important point is the lull in play. So after there's a goal gone in, there's often a counter from the opposing team, which can then push the price far further out. Um, and it's quite unlikely, I mean, it does happen occasionally, but it's quite unlikely there's two goals in quick succession. And that comes down to player psychology on pitch too. They've just scored a goal, is their main priority to then try and whack in another one within the space of a few minutes. So you're left with a position where potentially there's a massive upside because if the, ca the countering team score, the price goes back out to 1.7 and you're in for a huge profit, whereas the team that have just scored are far less likely to have another goal in quick succession. It's almost like creating yourself a free bet within the market at any size or stake that you want as long as you can get it matched down the bottom there. So quickly, just to interrupt, before we hit up strategy number two, I'm gonna do a hundred pound cash giveaway for one subscriber to this channel who's left a comment recently, just like we did in last week's video. So you can see on the left there, I've select public subscribers. I'm choosing 10 different names from the list that have recently commented to any video on this channel. Uh, as long as they've got the subscriber badge next to their name. I'm then gonna use the random number generator up on the top right there to pick the winner, get in touch with them, and send them 100 quid cash, no questions asked. Now, if the prize isn't claimed for any reason, we'll do a redraw for this cash prize next week in a different video upload. So stay tuned, check it out, and congratulations to Cloudy Palms this week, the winner. So on to strategy number two, and this is another decent one, although I'd say out of the three, this is the weakest. Now you've probably heard of time decay before in football, and this strategy is based around time decay, probably with a few differences to what you've heard elsewhere. So the reason it works is because chance deteriorates over time, as you can see on the chart on the right there, and so there is movement in the market in one direction. We know which direction the market should be moving in, which is a benefit to some degree. And we want to exploit price movement as it happens, knowing that it goes in that one direction. The other reason that this strategy works relatively well is because you can tie this in with player intent and motivation in terms of what's happening on pitch with your own football knowledge. Remember, uh, trading or betting should always be viewed like a boxing match where you can choose to step into the ring and take a punch you don't have to be in the game all the time is what i'm saying so with this strategy particularly be very careful when you do and don't use it the whole advantage is to step back keep minimum exposure in the market at any one time looking for that area of maximum movement um, in line with time decay so the best way of winning with this strategy is to target areas of accelerated decay 
Uh, we're going to highlight that and go through that in a moment in more depth. Focus on keeping that minimum exposure, as I say, in terms of potential loss, manage the downside, and offer entry bets only at value prices again much like the previous strategy uh, and seek extreme domination on the pitch basically so you want to look at things like expected goals um, shots off target shots on target uh, teams keeping the ball into the corners later in the match because quite frankly you know domination is what this strategy is all about if there's domination on pitch then it's a safer environment to use this strategy we don't want it to be competitive uh, competition is for losers in terms of betting quite frankly uh, is, a, is a fair statement if we look at this chart here I'll explain what these these lines on the chart are all about so you've got the football match from the start there you can see the traded volume down the bottom very small portion where there's a large chunk of volume matched that is pre-match the match has then started uh, throughout the match it's gone to about midway you can see there's a large spike in volume and price activity is stalled now the reason the price activity is stalled is because it's half time there's no match going on nothing's happening and so the price was flatlining more or less now the second half is where you see the time decay accelerate so that's what I've highlighted on the chart here so we've got the dark uh, black line at the bottom and the dark black line at the top and that is uh, the, the area where there was the most movement in this particular match in the shortest space of time highlighted by the light grey lines. Now, the Betfair chart, something to, to bear in mind, and you should, probably should bear in, that in mind with the previous chart also, are not in relation to time. So, you know, that first chunk on the left there, down the bottom, where there's a large volume matched, pre-match, that could have been two days, whereas the small chunk that I'm highlighting there was more like five minutes. So in the space of five minutes, we've gone for a price movement of about 2.08, 2.1, all the way up to 2.3, slightly above that 2.32. But all of that happened in the space of a few minutes in-game in the second half because time decay was accelerating the price. Now, the strategy is built around what's actually happening in the match. So you, you must have seen it in the past. Players start playing the ball into the corner. Uh, they know the scoreline. They're looking for points um, from the match in the various league tables. And they're playing the strategic game. So what you're looking for is, you know, when the ball's out of play, not a lot's going on. There's no motivation. There's no intent. The ball's being held back in certain areas. Um, and there's, quite frankly, not likely to be a goal. And then you quickly nip in and out the market. Minimum exposure for maximum return when time decay is moving at a fair speed. Like I say, strategy you can use in many different matches would just be very careful that you don't use it in the wrong environment because that's when a goal will go against you and I don't want it to happen because that means you'd have to do several other matches to bring your profit back on par. So strategy three and probably my favourite strategy is around parallel market intent. So what do we mean by that? Well, you know, I've named it that because that is the reason for the, the strategy working and the reason is that there are parallel markets that have the same intent even though they are different markets. Okay, When there is change in one area, it means that the market has to change elsewhere or a similar market has to change elsewhere um, and it's fastest finger first. So we're thinking about injuries, stuff like that. Something I can relate this to in horse racing is activity that happens at Cheltenham will then impact the prices at Aintree uh, around the Grand National meeting um, around about a month later. So if you're sat watching the Grand National meeting markets whilst Cheltenham is on and you see what's happening in the final home straight, you can often catch a price movement at Aintree because it is a parallel type market. And the same happens in football. So when we think about winning, uh, you want to use your football knowledge, you want to have live information at your fingertips, you want to think about areas that this is going to work, so team sheets, uh, future matches, injuries, if a player is injured, it stands to reason, if say for example uh, a team star player is injured in the final 20 minutes of a game but they've got other games to follow on uh, in the league later that month, then the price is going to change elsewhere. So you want to think like a football manager when you're thinking about where you're going to find your trades with this one um, and then you need to react as quickly as possible.
Now it isn't the strategy that most people would be expecting, but it's an extremely reliable one. So thinking back to team sheets, you know, news comes out and the price moves. That can be an hour before, 20 minutes before. It depends what's happening and what's happening in the news. I have got a very good high quality example, the space of a few minutes to share with you on this one, um, where I actually done it and some news was released about a football team around about an hour before the start of the match, which we're now gonna put in the end screen of this video. So make sure you click that one to follow through. Um, it's a few Few minutes long and it shows you strategy number three in action also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for further betting strategy related content